Right through this day, I believe that God is going to touch hearts. The Holy Spirit is going to move. You just need to be aware. Don't you restrict it from your situation. God has set things up for this hour. And I believe that today, God planned a long, long time ago. And we're going to hear him speak. It all started probably, I think this year for us was in January in Scotland. Um, Our senior leadership team, our DLT, we went away to Scotland in January, not knowing what was going to hit the world. And we went away to cast vision for 2020 Cave, which was going to happen in May. And what happened was, is we went away and we met at the airport, and then we traveled up to Scotland, and then we got out in this winter wonderland, snowing, and we were in the, the minibus. And as soon as we were traveling to our place, God started speaking to us. And he started speaking about what was coming next. And do you know what? Many people think that 2020 was going to be, right, we're going to have, we had 10-4 before, but perhaps we're going to have 40-40 or something like that. And and it was like, oh, what are we going to do? Where are we going to go next? And yet God didn't really give us many locations. He said, actually, I'm going to turn it on its head and I'm going to change the way you plant church. I'm going to change the way you do things. You see, I've got a complaint. I've got a real big complaint. And like many people say, hey, do you know what? We, after nine years, since we launched our first one into Cardiff, our first you know, kid that we had, we launched it into Cardiff and we saw that amazing church grow. In nine years, we've been to about 18 locations. We've got about 18 locations around the world, nations all around the world. I'm speaking to people because of that today. You were part of a vision that we had. You were part of the rain that we saw was coming. And there is something so powerful about that. We've got 18 locations and we value every person. And yet it's not enough. It's not enough. And guys, this has burdened me for two years because I've been working out. If we carry on the rate of church planting the way that we've been doing so far, I'm going to be dead. And we wouldn't have done as much as we're called to do. And there was just something about it's not enough just to say, what if we did 100 churches? It's not enough. The problem we got is too many people are dying who don't know the gospel. They don't know what this message is about. There's too many people in our world that are just waiting. They're waiting to hear. And it's like, God, I feel like our plans have been frustrated at times. I feel like, you know, even going over to... uh, Raleigh, you know, this past year, it's like, wow, just on the start of lockdown, it's like we're starting to get going, it's like things just get shut down, and yet today you're gathering together in a barn, there's something happening, but I, see, when we were in Scotland, we started talking, and God said, I'm going to give you a new strategy, and I felt as we stood and waited, God gave us an answer to our complaint, and that's what I'm going to share with you. Guys, our strategy so far has been too limited. It's, um, uh, you know, it's great that we're in four continents, but heck, what about the rest? There's like, there's something limiting about that. The fact that we have to raise up teams, we can't do it quick enough. The finances involved, the visas, the amount of work, and God is saying, I want to do it differently. I want to do a new thing. And that's what he's going to do. So this whole thing of... Frustration, I think God's done it on purpose. Because what I've noticed is that God will often frustrate your plans, my plans, and us as a church, just so that he makes us willing to do something different. He did it with the Hebrews. (laughs) When they were in slavery, he made things tougher before they got better because he wanted willingness to pursue him. And even now, I think God has been like putting a a willingness in our heart to say, are you prepared to do anything? Are you prepared to give it all? It's like, yeah, God, we're planting churches. We're doing, he said, yeah, but are you you willing to lay that down? Lay down your strategy and risk it all. So I started thinking, what if we took what we'd learned in this past 10 years, all about church planting? We've learned about different cultures and the way the gospel works and how we train up teams and what what works and what doesn't work. What if we took all of that that we've learned in 10 years and we package it together into a digital format? What if we end up coming and creating a community around the world? What if we had church planters 
that actually weren't perhaps so much with us, but they're actually out there waiting for us. Maybe we're waiting for everyone to come to us, but maybe they're waiting for us to send the message out. Maybe there's something that is stirring in the way that we think. Maybe some of these people are just thinking, we need someone just to believe in us. Maybe that couple who are just in some nation right now, they're just waiting for someone to say, do you know what? We believe in you and you can do this and we're going to resource you and we're going to equip you. We're going to light your fire. We're going to create a spark. We're going to create a spark where it just feels like, how do we get going? So this has got me thinking about what we could do. And today, I want to just show you a little teaser video. Firestarter is going to be our new movement of people around the world. It's going to be called Firestarter because we're going to light fires. Freedom Church, we're going to light fires all around the world. And you're going to see this. You're going to see it in our campuses. You're going to see it everywhere we go. And what this, what this means, Firestarter, to me, this, this is like, it's like us going and lighting a fire in places anywhere around this world. And in fact, this whole thing, what it means is it means to empower people to plant churches worldwide. That's basically our mission. God, God just said, make it simple. All the time, he kept saying, don't make it complicated. He said, look at my gospel. Look at what I did. He said, what you need to do is empower people worldwide to plant churches. Simple as that. And straight away, you'll notice we use the word people because we were thinking, oh, empower leaders. And I thought, no, I'm going to take leaders out of it because many of you, you don't see yourself as a leader. <laughs> you see yourself, it's just, well, I'm just someone in my community. I'm someone in this situation. And we don't perhaps even think we're qualified to be able to step into this. But God said, take it to the people. You've got to go and ignite the people, the hearts of the people. Firestarter is about going and creating these sparks, about going and saying, come on, we're just going to, we're just going to like create sparks and see what sets fire. I think it's so, it's so amazing to see what God's about to do because this is for anyone, anywhere. We see Firestarter being people who might be, there might be a team, it might be a couple, it might be a single person. This is what I just love. Is It's not like we have to send a team of 12 people, we're going to send them off. No, I think there are right now today listening to this, right, that I think that God is going to be speaking to you. I believe the call of God is going to come out. The sending power of God is going to come through this message today. It's going to disturb your world because no one saw before that you might be qualified. But there's something about God said, I, I, I just want to do a new thing in the world right now. And he's going to stir us in that. He's going to stir us. This is for anyone, anywhere. In fact, I'm not going to say, oh, it's not that sort of person or this sort of person. It can be a single mum with a great friend who says, you know what, I think we can change the world that we're in. I think it could be a student, it could be a student at university that says, I'm just going to start meeting and creating a fire and we're going to be the sparkers. We're going to create a spark into the situation and we're going to say, come on, burn, baby, burn. I think for too long, unbelief and doubt and disappointment has made the church back off. And we backed off in our four walls of our buildings and we said, oh, well, this is where it happens. And I just feel like God is saying more and more, no, there's, there's something new in the earth right now. Do you think it's fascinating that this is our smallest, because of COVID, this is our smallest physical gathering, but our largest digital gathering ever, right? If that's not saying something about how God is going to do things. See, we're in an age where we can do church through screens online around the world like today. But this isn't just for us. This is for the world, right? As we have done, I think our guys have done an incredible job in freedom of doing online church every Sunday. But God equipped us and anointed us to do that. But it's not just to serve us. 
That's going to serve the future fire starters. So we're going to continue with that even when we come back in our locations. Now in the early church, if I just take you back, because I just love talking about the church and when we can learn things from it, and we talk about fire starter. Well, the early church, when it really got blown up, when breakout happened, was really after Stephen, one of the disciples, he got stoned. That's when it sort of says people scattered and it pushed them up the coast and it pushed them into Greece and it pushed them different areas. This was, this was the beginning of a breakout for the church. It came through persecution and pressure. Everything the enemy wanted to do was to kill and destroy but God came and he says, I'm going to take what he plans. See, Jesus is master at this. He comes and he says, oh, yeah, you think, you think you're going to like restrict the church. No, actually, the pressure you put on, I will take hold of it to create greater momentum than ever before. And I believe we're in a situation right now in our world where the Holy Spirit is creating pressure. Pressure to our lives. Where we're having to meet in homes. Where we're having to meet. It's almost like because it was almost accidental, but... I don't think, see, it was accidental because God was saying, oh, the enemy is going to bring disease. I'm going to bring life. I'm going to do it in the homes. I'm going to do it where, oh, you just don't know what you got yourself into, enemy. You don't know what you, you've just played into my hands right now because the church is just going to go viral. There's something about the church going to go beyond the borders of what we ever realized. And it says that the church broke out. And, you know, I've been reading some early church history of real lives, real people. And it's, it's just fascinating. In the years after the disciples and around that time, believers that went out. And it says this gospel that they couldn't contain. They said it was so valuable. They couldn't keep quiet. It was so valuable where they went. They, it says they gossiped the gospel. It, it was like they, they just went out and they just kept talking and it just kept happening. And it says, do you know where it spread? It, it spread amongst the common people. It spread amongst those people that were servants and slaves. It spread amongst those that were in bondage and the oppressed. It was those, even for fear of their life, they kept gossiping the gospel. Because some fire started in them, right? And i got to get this fire starter idea over to you. Because some of you will think, oh, is it really that easy? Is it really going to, have we ever seen that? Yeah, we have right at the beginning, right at the beginning. And you know, a huge part um, of that whole move of the breakout of the New Testament church, do you know where it started? It started amongst women. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, we know that even in the world right now, but we see history how how women have just been downtrodden and they've been devalued and even through this time and yet what does God do? He steps in and he says, oh, I'm just going to pour out these fires through women. And it actually says that these were the women, even in Jerusalem, right? When they had the headquarters in Jerusalem of the, of the New Testament church, it was in a woman's home who stepped up and said, use my house, use my home. My home is going to be the place of the headquarters of the early church. It's incredible. You go through and you see story after story of people who worked in the marketplaces, people who worked sort of in the wineries, people who worked and they, they just, they found Jesus and they just kept spreading. Do you know what as well? Most of them that caused the breakout of the early church that went into nations were illiterate. They couldn't, they couldn't even read or write, but they heard the message. And that is so challenging for me today because what we do is we go, well, we need this course and we need to sort of go for perhaps we need to do a year of this and a year of that. And all that stuff is good and we value it, equipping people. And we're going to equip fire starters, but we're not going to be saying, oh, we need a year training. We're actually going to be looking at the heart and the call. We're going to be looking at your heart and your call. And we're going to just be saying, look, let's have a discussion. Let's look at this. Let's, let's see if God has called you. Let's see you know, what God is doing in you right now. And I look back to that early church. And I'm so blessed by women. So blessed that that message went out through the world. Because they encountered Christ and they wanted to spread it. So where are we going to do Firestarter? basically anywhere in the world that can understand us. If you can understand us and understand this message, we're open to have a conversation and we're open to see a fire start 
in your community, in your place, in your situation. This is, this is anywhere, right? We're talking about anywhere. And I think this, this whole thing, it might be where we haven't got a Freedom Church, but I think there'll even be maybe one or two people in our Freedom Churches that might have a heart for a community an hour away and might say, I'm going to go and do one on a Wednesday night. I just, I just feel like we're in trouble, church. I just feel like we're, we're like really in trouble. God said to me while I sat down there waiting to start today, he says, oh, gee, do you, do you realize what you're about to do? And they're going, not really. <laughs> not really. But I know for sure I can't keep quiet about this. I can't keep... And these women of the early church, they saw opportunity. Look what it says here in Acts 2, verse 42, 46, 47. I'm going to base today on these scriptures. I just felt like God saying, let's go back to the way it was, the way it was meant to be. It says, they devoted themselves. And this word devoted, it means lovingly loyal. <sighs> devoted them to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer, lovingly loyal you couldn't dissuade them every day they continue to meet together not once a week some of us struggle once a week some of us twice we're like hey i'm a serious christian <laughs> guys because we're consumers at the end of the day and i think we've learned if we're going to be fire starters this isn't about well, i've had my I, I want to do my little meeting no it's about coming and saying gospel first I'm going to put you at the, at the beginning. I'm going to put you at the first. And here they were. They, they met every day. They broke bread. And they did it with glad and sincere hearts. They ate together. Not out of, like, duty. Not out of, oh, that brother's annoying me again. If I've been eating all the bread before it gets round. It's not, it's not like there was this duty or obligation, but a love. Praising God. See them? enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. That's going to be the basis of Firestar. That's going to be the basis of what we build is right there. Everything is in that scripture. We're going to unpack it, and I'm going to unpack more of it this evening. Now, guys, for quite a few of us, and when I was a young man, I went to one of these crusades. I went to a Billy Graham crusade. And again, just, you know, honor to this guy who, you know, we just know that millions were impacted for the gospel. I mean, heck, and I think it was even this year, Rainer Bonnke, or in the last 12 months, Rainer Bonnke, uh, again, a German uh, evangelist, missionary, who we had a chance to be part of right at the beginning of our marriage. We went and spent a few weeks in Africa with him. And again, millions of people. We sat in crusades like this and served and were on the team. But I feel like God's saying, yeah, there's, you know, there's still nothing wrong with that. But I want you to know, church, that even as the great evangelists are dying, I'm doing something new. I believe that even as the world, as the enemy, you know, I know that his son, Billy Graham's son, was going to come, I think, to Wales. Um, and, and basically, they canceled venues because of his Bible-believing beliefs. Couldn't get to do the Crusades. And I just felt like God saying, oh, you're going to see more of this. There's going to be more. You're not allowed to meet. You're not allowed. No, we're not going to let you because of your views. And if you don't agree with this and agree with that, we, we will not give you. We, we even ourselves as a church, <laughs> in the early days of planting into Swansea, we were banned from every council building. Because someone's life got changed and the enemy got into rob it, twisted it, and from it they came and said, we're not going to rent out to any building, we will not rent to you. Because I just want you to see that this, this could be something that's going to happen in the future in parts of our world. It already is happening and it's forbidden in some places. So Firestarter combats that. Firestarter for me... There's something about authentic community. There's something about Acts 2. There's something about building. And when I see what's happening in some of our locations, when we went to Kigali, 
I know that Jordan, he went there to lead that with a small team. Not, he said, oh, we're not going to do it in a normal way. We're going to do it in the home, and we're going to raise up people within the home. And shout out to you guys in Kigali, because even right now, I, I know that there's, you've grown that, and against the odds, because you weren't allowed to meet publicly, against the odds, you have like grown this vibrant community that love one another, that are devoted, that break bread together, that praise God, that even right now, there's, you've got group, another group, another group happening, people being discipled, people in our academy. Guys, this is, do you realize Firesight is already happening, and we've been learning and looking from all of this, but now we're bringing it to you because we're sounding the trumpet of Firestarter. It's going to happen in homes. It's going to happen in places around the world and we're going to have these fire starter churches one of the big things I want to say to you church is it's not a small group this is not a small group fire starter is not oh it's small groups it's not small groups because we often do small church, uh, small group churches we do that sort of thing from our church almost for ourselves. When you think of a small group, it's normally us meeting together to perhaps have a chat about what was spoken about on a Sunday. And it's very internal, and that's fellowship, right? That's fellowship. It's discipling. It's building. And there's need for that. It says, don't give up meeting together. So there's need for small group. The fire starter is what it says on the can. It is to start fires in communities. It's to start fires, whether there's three people meeting together. It's to see the fire of the Holy Spirit set on fire, right? Change lives, change, inviting someone into the home through hosp- hospitality. Maybe it's in a workplace or a university hall. See, we're not restricted, but I see largely it's going to be in homes around the world. And it's going to be people gathering, and maybe it's going to be that sort of come in and watch an online church. Uh, and if you understand English, and there's going to be this thing of, right, we're, we're going to build church. We're going to build church. We're going to raise disciples. Why? Because everything God has been speaking to us in the cave the last few years has been setting us up for this. You remember that I spoke to you, and I said, he hasn't called us to be dwellers. He's called us to make disciples. And yet, so often we want to just dwell and sit, but God right now is causing us to make disciples. And we're going to see these fire star churches popping up here and there. Already it's happening. And in fact, I've asked two of our dear friends who are some of our most experienced leaders in Freedom Church who are going to oversee Firestarter and it's going to be Karen and Chris Cook. I'm so thankful for this couple. So thankful for them, for what God's going to do through them. Love you guys. Because when I think, when I think about what's about to happen, I want to invest our best. So we have been planning and rearranging things and the way we do things so that we can release them into what's coming next. Because we don't want to just randomly say, whoever wants to do this. No, we want, we want to be able to connect with people while it's still possible. We want to talk and catch the heart. We want to have someone like put in an application form so we can say, okay, can we agree on this? Can we agree on our DNA? Can we agree on, on, on building a freedom church that is a fire starter? And these guys, I mean, they're the best. They're, they're experienced, and they're such releases. And this, this brings me on to the other part. When God spoke to me about Firestarter, and I started thinking about, yeah, we can do these checks, and we can do this, and we, we are going to be responsible with it. We're going, to cult, we, we're going to nurture it, right? But God said, he said, whatever you do, don't you try controlling what I'm about to do. I said, what do you mean, God? He said, he said, with so many movements, you want to control and set the scene and the boundaries of what I want to do. But what I'm about to do with Firestarter is like trying to shut down a fire that I'm starting. If it hasn't got the oxygen, if it hasn't got the wind, it's going to remain a little pokey fire. And God says, you've got to take your hands off this. You've got to take control. And I, this is amazing because we are an apostolic movement. 
The apostolic basically means to release. It means you've got to let go and you've got to release. They're sending. That's why, as I'm speaking right now, the sending power is coming down the wires. The sending power is coming down and speaking to people. There are people right now, see, the sending power is like release. But what we so often do, we want to control what we have and say, haven't we got a nice, comfy church? Haven't we, like, it's going well and, you know, we know what's happening over there and we know what's happening there. And God is saying, don't you try and control it. Nurture it, but don't control it. Because it won't be a breakout at all. So we're going to create some sparks. And this is how I see it. I want to demonstrate this because this is how I see it. We're going to come, and I just got this fancy one here. It's actually a gift from Karen Cook, funny enough. Oh. Wow! Oh, oh. Guys, you're going to need to get used to this because God said, don't you expect. What we all want is success every time we strike. See, we've got to get over ourselves. We've got to get over ourselves. We think, God, as long as we do it, it's going to look good. It's going to be great. And how can we have the greatest success? And God says, no, I want you to get your hands off. Not everyone is going to work. But guys, we, we started H&I 32 years ago. And we lit our spark in our home. I'm bringing you right back to where we started. We started with six people in our home and just met without a clue of what God was about to do. We just met in a home, young couple, young children. But he lit a spark. But what we're going to do, guys, we're going to light other, other places through Firestarter. Even right now, I know that there are some people perhaps in a university situation. You had to leave perhaps one of our locations, and you had to go to university. And it's almost like, I don't know what I'm going to do for the next three years. I'll try and find somewhere, and maybe that's right for you. But I think I'm speaking to some fire starters. I think what you're going to do is, you're there saying, look, I, I haven't really found anything. I haven't really, you know, what am I going to do? God wants to do something in your situation because there are so many people around you that need a flame. They need something lit. They need you to, to light up your community. And so they're going to start something. And perhaps it's about a couple of hours away. So every, every month, you might travel back to your campus just to be part of it. Then there's someone else. Someone had a daughter who is actually part of Freedom Church now. They were so, they've seen such growth and life change. But they live in a city in the USA, where they're not part of a church, but suddenly they're starting to think, maybe that's us. We got friends around us that are disengaged with church. They, they sort of don't really know what the, the passion of following Christ is. And right now, we're going to give the opportunity to light something in their community. We're not going to say, you have to travel. You're going to, well, sorry, but we're not coming for a few years. See that? People always say to me, when are you coming to our city? And it's like, maybe five years. But Firestarter, today, we're birthing something. We're birthing something. And I think many of these, like I've got here, I, got, I just think that something's going to happen in South America. You can do it. Come on, South America. <laughs> South America, I'd, for some time now, there's just, it's like, but how are we going to go there? But you see, when the people are already in place who are part of culture, part of community, part of relationships, it's not us sending teams in. It's actually us saying, we're going to equip you. 
We're going to release you. We're going to do this. Guys, let's see. I'm, I want to give as many examples as possible. I think there's going to be someone from Limassol, right, that is going to end up catching the fire that we have in our church, and they're going to move from there, and they're going to go to Iran. A family are going to come on a holiday to one of our locations and it's going to blow their world up because of the message they hear. They're never going to be the same again, but they're going to go home and they're going to start a fire starter church. And this one, this has been on my heart for a while. I believe, it's a like this that God is going to start a Welsh-speaking fire starter church. I think it's been in your heart for a while. Maybe you're part of our church right now, but I believe that God wants to do something throughout Wales. I think he's going to spread it right into Wales. You've seen nothing yet, Cardiff, and I just want to say, it's going to break out, it's going to break out. Even in India, Mumbai... I think they, they're going to have a friend in Chennai and they're just thinking, how can I join? What can I do? See, what this does is it takes it from just like, oh, I'll just join in. I'll just catch up. It, it starts bringing it right to my door. It brings it to the door of the fire starter and it says, what about you? You could be the one that I've qualified. You could be the one that I'm moving in. And yet all of this, while I was preparing it, there was one other thing. Stay with me. I believe that there's going to come a time with Firestarter where I'm going to meet someone and they'll say to me, I'm a fire starter, and I have been building for two years, but you never knew. I think there are going to be fires that we're going to light that we won't even know the names of in the future. I think there's going to be those that are sort of hidden away in countries that we thought the gospel couldn't get to, but we're going to make a way of releasing what we have, resourcing people, believing in them, building a community, building a community of these fire starters to say, we're in this together. We're in this together. We can actually change our communities. And that was the vision that God gave me. Because he was saying, oh, don't think you can control it. Don't think you can have a, li- a little list. He said, how small-minded is that? He said, look up at the stars. Can you count them? Oh. Wait and see what I'm about to do. This is going to start. And already we, we have already got a few fire starters that are actually about to be launched so this is already happening that's why I had to call you all together we couldn't wait till next May there is something moving and shifting in the earth I spoke to a friend from the US this this week who came he said I just want to run something by you and I just you know I've got I just want to you know be accountable to you and he's, he's a pastor and he said this is what God is speaking to me but it sounds crazy he started talking to me about what God is putting in him and his wife's heart about a fire starter type idea. And I I was there smiling, thinking, God, you're doing this over the earth, aren't you? You're doing this over the earth. But God has prepared us. He's got us ready to do this. But it's all going to be about the individual or the individuals involved because we can either decide just to be dwellers and it's not, it's not for everyone. We're going to still build campuses. We're still going to build locations. But also, we're birthing a nation of fire starters. So I want to birth a nation. And it's been like a flipping pregnancy. You know? Not that I've been pregnant, but I've seen quite a few. And, and it's, like, it's like really, it's, it's like, wow, the, the moans and the groans of labor. Because right now, the reason I called it breakout is because God is about to break out in the way we build church. This breaks it out across borders. It breaks it out in other countries. Already someone has asked me and said, 
are you okay if we take online church and we translate it and then we do it sort of a week after and we have, we, we have our own community? And I said, hey, you can take it and you can use it. You can translate it. You can get the message out. If this is about the gospel, that's what we want to see. We want to equip you. We want to see people stirred up with this passion that started in the early church and is with us right now. And I feel like God is kindling it. He's taking us back and he's saying, are you ready? Are you ready? See, religion and human nature has always wanted to control the gospel. It's almost kept the idea of leadership to the elite. It's like we have, you know, people that, and we believe in honoring our leaders, but I think so many people think that it's, well, it's for the elite, and I could never be, and that's why we're saying we're going to empower people. Those women in the early church... They were known as the accidental evangelists. <laughs> they didn't have a big grand idea. We're going to do this, we'll do that, and this is my five point vision. And come on, you need to get on our training program. They had a passion in them that this gospel, they encountered Jesus in a way that they could not contain it, they couldn't keep it quiet, and it kept spreading and it kept spreading. They were accidental evangelists, and I believe we're in a new age where the accidental evangelists, they are sleeping amongst us. They are there waiting to be lit. They're waiting for someone to say, what about you? What about you? And I believe it's going to knock on people's doors. It's coming now. The sending power is coming right now, right now into some of your communities, right now into where you're moving next. You thought you were moving next to this situation, and we haven't got a freedom church there. You thought it was because, oh, well, is it the job? Is that? But we just got this conviction. Hey, maybe the conviction is connected to this. And I'm saying that we believe in you. I believe in the power of this gospel. And I can see what God can do when people are available and when they're willing. You know, the church even chained the Bible to the pulpit to stop the common person from understanding what was really in it. There's something in us that wants to control, but right now I believe that God is just saying, come on, you need to to give this away. Take everything you've learned in 10 years and begin using it to to release, to resource, to align people to the vision. And then release people. And whether someone is a group that grows and splits to two groups, three groups, four groups, maybe even grows up into a campus, we're not putting that pressure on. We're just saying, spread the gospel. Be a community that is authentic. Minister to one another in the power of the Holy Spirit. That, that, that's what we're going to say. It's just, you just got to do it. Live for him. Put him first. Why? Because it says that we are all ministers of the gospel. We're not all called to lead, but we're all called to be ministers of the gospel. And I believe that potential is in you. It's in you right now. The early church, although they had all these uh, groups and women and homes, or, you know, all around, they were like breaking out. They came under that apostolic cover. They didn't always know everything was going on, but they came under an apostolic cover, and that's how we're going to do Firestar. We're taking ownership of that. We're giving opportunity. I believe that COVID has birthed a breakout for the church I believe he's taken us from a garden to a plantation. I believe that he's taken us from using a watering can to an irrigation system. I believe that what was spoken last year, you see it was happening, it's going. And right now, today, at the start of this, we birth a nation of fire starters. They're out there. Many don't even know it yet, but we're going to be sounding the trumpet. Maybe you even know some people. Maybe you know that couple. You know that disconnected person. You know them. And this is going to be something you're going to go listen to this because God is calling. So right now, I want to finish with the full video of Firestarter. Get ready to go. This will change our world. You are a spark. A single flame. Burning through the day to day. Safely shelter your flame away. And it's just a case of waiting until it goes. Out. But when you share that spark, something heavenly happens. Fires start. Lighting up new pages, tearing through the eras and ages. 
as the fire that was once your simple solo spark rages. The glow of purpose spreading. This is legacy. This is God's kingdom coming, quicker and multiplying as we share the heat. Melting icy prison walls in cold, warring souls. From spark to flame to fire to furnace. The phosphorus of our calling causing the fruit of heaven to flourish and thrive. Lighting up hallways, homes and houses, terraces and neighbourhoods, communities, schools, streets and cities, reaching governments and committees, from prisons to palaces. Could, Could it be? God's love blazing through every boundary and border, his beautiful global new world order. But it starts with a spark.